4.10 special bonding. For this lesson, please take out your reference tables as we'll be using uh, table S, the periodic table, and table E. Let's move on to the lesson. Let's first talk about uh, polyatomic ions. A polyatomic ion is an ion with many atoms. So it's many atoms grouped together and they have a collective charge or charged together. Where you can find this is on reference table E, which lists polyatomic ions. For example, you have hydronium, which is H3O+. Uh, NH4 plus is ammonium, uh, CN minus is cyanide, CO3, 2 minus is carbon, and so on and so forth. So we'll be using this table E throughout the lesson. All right, let's first start by talking about uh, ionic substances with polyatomic ions. But before we do that, let's break down this type of substance. Um, polyatomic ions are usually made up of atoms many atoms that are nonmetals put together to form a single charge. As a result, ionic substances with polyatomic ions usually have both covalent and ionic bonds. All right, the ionic bond is usually between the positively charged ions and the negatively charged ions. All right, um, remember that ion, ionic bonds contain attractions between oppositely charged ions. One is positive and the other is negative. All right, covalent bonds exist between all the nonmetals in a polyatomic ion. The basic idea here is that if you have a if, it, if you have a uh, ionic compound with polyatomic ions, the compound always has both ionic and covalent bonds. The ionic bond is between the positive and the negatively charged ions because that's what an ionic bond is. It's, a, it's an attraction between the positive and negatively charged ions. The covalent bonds exist between the nonmetals and the polyatomic ion because that's what a covalent bond is by definition. All right, um, now, how do we know what a polyatomic ion is? Let's just remember we can use reference table E, which gives you a list of the polyatomic ions. All right, so now let's try two examples of ionic substances with, uh, ionic substances with polyatomic ions. One, ex one such example of an ionic substance with a polyatomic ion is BaCO3, which stands for barium carbonate. You can look up barium on table S, the symbol is Ba, and carbonate is CO3 2 minus, which you can look up on um, table E. All right, so if we look and use table E, we'll see that CO3 has a charge of 2 minus as an ion. All right, um, and Ba, we know, has a charge of 2 plus, since it's valence 3 to 1, loose, so there's none. And Ba has a valence of 2, so it loses 2 electrons. All right, um, so you know that it's a positively charged cation also because of the fact that the top oxidation state is positive 2. So its ionic charge is plus 2. CO3's charge is 2 minus based on table E. All right, uh, in this ionic substance, there are ionic bonds between Ba2 plus and CO3 2 minus because that's what ionic bonds are by definition. Since the two are oppositely charged ions and yeah so that's how it works. The Ba is a 2 plus charge whereas the CO3 is a 2 minus charge. So they're oppositely charged and that's why an ionic bond is by definition. The uh, attraction between positively charged cations and negatively charged anions. All right. Now we have covalent bonds. The covalent bonds in this substance are between the C and the O in the polyatomic ion CO3 2 minus or carbonate ions, since they are all nonmetals. All right, let's try another example of an ionic substance with polyatomic ions. All right, um, NH4Cl. So if you look up um, NH4's charge on um, table E, you'll find that's plus one. So the ammonium ion or the NH4's ion is charge is plus one. You look up Cl on the periodic table, it's charge when it forms an ion is negative one because the top oxidation state is minus one. All right, so NH4's charge is plus one, Cl's charge is minus one. All right, if you notice, you have a plus one, and plus one charge for NH4, and you have a minus one charge for Cl when they form ions. So the ionic bond is between NH4 positive and the Cl minus, because the ionic bonds, by definition, are um, attractions between oppositely charged ions. In this case, the oppositely, oppositely charged ions are NH4 plus and Cl minus. All right? And we also have covalent bonds that form between um, the N and the H atoms in NH4 positive or the um, polyatomic ion ammonium because of the fact that N and H are both nonmetals. All right? So just note that since both of these are ionic substances and also because they have um, polyatomic ions, they both have ionic and covalent bonds. The ionic bond in this case is between the positive 2 and the negative 2, and the covalent bond is between the C and the O and the polyatomic ion carbonate or CO3 2 minus. In this case, the ionic bond is between the uh, positive 1 and NH4 plus, and the negative 1 and Cl minus, and the covalent bond is between the N and the H 
um, atoms in NH4+, plus because they're both nonmetals. All right, now let's talk about how to identify ionic substances with polyatomic ions. All right, we can tell we have an ionic substance with polyatomic ions as follows, and here's how we do it in steps. Um, in step one, you have to find a minimum of at least one polyatomic ion. All right, uh, from table E. Also, you must have positive and negative ions. So the polyatomic ion will tell you, um, you know, that there, there's a polyatomic ion to begin with. And you know that's ionic because ionic bonds form between positively charged and negatively charged ions, all right? So that's how you know. You have to first establish that there's at least one polyatomic ion from table E that you can find, and you have to also establish that there are positive and negatively charged ions. All right, the types of ions that you can look up are both on table E and, peri and the periodic table. So the periodic table lists metal cations, which are positive like CH2+, K+, Al3+, etc., etc. The nonmetal ions, which are negative, consist of things like Cl-, O2-, N3-, things like that. All right, and table E lists polyatomic ions like ammonium, NH4+, plus, uh, carbonate, CO3-2-, minus, you know, all those other things. All right, so just remember, um, ionic substances with polyatomic ions have both covalent and ionic bonds. But remember to identify whether an ionic substance has polyatomic ions, you have to first find one polyatomic ion that's listed on table E in the formula, and you must also establish that they're positive and negative ions. All right, so let's look at three examples of these. Um, an example of doing this is NH NaHCO3, um, which is sodium bicarbonate or baking soda. So here we have um, one negative polyatomic ion, which is HCO3 minus, or the uh, bicarbonate ion listed on table E, and we have one positive metal cation, which is Na+, which is the sodium ion listed on the periodic table. All right, uh, so since we've established that we have one negative and one positive ion, the negative ion being HCO3- or bicarbonate, and one positive ion, meaning Na+, or the sodium ion, we can establish that's ionic. Then we have to establish whether we have a polyatomic ion. We definitely do have a polyatomic ion because HCO3- is listed as a bicarbonate ion in table E. So since we've established that we have a positive and negative ion and that we also have one polyatomic ion, we can establish that we have both ionic and covalent bonds because ionic substances with polyatomic ions, by definition, have both ionic and covalent bonds. The ionic bond is between the Na plus here for the sodium ion and the HCO3 minus here for the bicarbonate ion. The, the positive ion and the negative ion here form the ionic bond because they're between oppositely charged ions. The covalent bond is between the HC and O atoms, which are all nonmetal atoms, and the polyatomic ion HCO3 minus, also known as bicarbonate. Alright, for example, two, we have NH4Br. We have to first establish whether we have positive and negative ions. We definitely do have a positive ion and a negative ion. The positive ion is the positive polyatomic ion NH4 plus, or the ammonium ion, which is listed on table E. All right, so that's the first part. The second part is the um, negative nonmetal anion, um, which is the Br minus or the bromide ion listed on the periodic table, which you can look up as a top oxidation state is negative one. So there's a negative nonmetal anion, and you have a positive polyatomic ion, which is NH4 plus, or the ammonium ion from table E. All right, so since we've established that we have a positive polyatomic ion, which is ammonium, which is a charge of plus one, and a negative nonmetal anion, which is Br minus with the charge of negative one, we've established that there's an ionic bond between the ammonium, which has a charge of positive one, and B bromide, which has a charge of negative one. All right, the covalent bond is between the polyatomic ions um, atoms, which are N and H. N and H are both nonmetals, so they form a covalent bond. Finally, we have uh, NH4NO3. Notice how we have no metals. It doesn't matter that we have no metals. We had to just establish that we have um, that we have ions in order to establish that there's an ionic bond. So, in order to establish an ionic bond, we have to prove the following. We can find that there is one positive polyatomic ion, which is the NH4 positive ion or the ammonium ion from table E. And we also can establish that there's one negative polyatomic ion, which is an NO3 minus, or the nitrate ion from table E. All right? So we have one positive ion, which is the polyatomic ion NH4 plus, or ammonium ion from table E. And we also establish that there's one negative ion, which is the NO3 minus, or the nitrate ion from table E. So since we have one positive, one, one, one negative ion, we've established that there's an ionic bond between the ammonium, which is positive, and the nitrate, which is negative ions. All right. Next, we have the covalent bonds. The covalent bonds are between the N and the H atoms in the polyatomic ion NH4+, as well as between N and O and NO3-. The reason why these two form a covalent bond is because they're both nonmetals within the ion. 
And these two form a covalent bond because they're also two, met two nonmetals within one ion. Our covalent bonds are between nonmetals by definition, and ionic bonds are between positive and negative ions. The positive and negative ions are ammonium and nitrate. All right, the covalent bonds in NH4 plus are between N and H, which are two nonmetals, and they're also found in NO3 minus, and the covalent bonds in NO3 minus are between N and O in the ion because they're both nonmetals. All right, so just remember, two nonmetals gives you the covalent bond part of the, of the ionic substance with the polyatomic ion, and the ionic part in terms of bonding within the ionic substance with the polyatomic ion happens between the positive and negatively charged ion. Now let's try an example using what we know, example problem one, or sample problem one. Identify the types of bonds and explain why. So A, NH4, Cl, NH4 plus is on table E is ammonium, and Cl, Cl gains one electron and becomes Cl minus. So we have ionic and covalent bonds. Covalent between the N and H atoms, which are nonmetals and ammonium, NH4 positive, and we have ionic bonds between the ammonium, uh, Ammonium ion, which is NH4 plus, and the chloride Cl minus ions, all right? Plus and minus ones, the ionic, and the covalence between the nonmetals and NH4 plus. All right, um, B, K, NO3, K loses one to become K plus, and NO3 minus is on table E as nitrate. So, um, so, uh, yeah, these are ionic and covalent bonds, covalent between the N and O atoms in NO3 minus and ionic between K plus potassium cations and NO3 minus, which are nitrate anions, all right? CBASO4, barium loses two electrons to become Ba2 plus, and SO4, two minus is on table E as sulfate, so we have ionic and covalent bonds. Covalent between the S and O in the SO4, two minus cation, uh, sorry, polyatomic ion, and ionic between Ba2 plus and SO4, two minus. All right, DNH4OH, NH4 plus is a cation. Um, and OH minus is an anion, and they're both on table E. All right, covalent and ionic bonds are also in this compound with covalent between N and H and ammonium cation, NH4 plus, as well as between O and H and the hydroxide anion, OH minus. All right, the ionic part is between the NH4 plus and the OH minus, since they're oppositely charged ions. NH4 is positive, OH minus is negative. E and F, there are only two types of elements involved. Um, in each, in E, we have two different nonmetals, C and H, only. So this is polar covalent, which are bonds between C and H. In F, we have one type of metal, Al, and one type of nonmetal, Cl. So Al becomes cation 3 plus, and Cl becomes anion Cl minus, so they attract each other only in an ionic bond because you only have a metal and a nonmetal. You don't have a polyatomic ion, so therefore it's only ionic because it's a metal and a nonmetal. In this case, even though you have the polyatomic ion OH minus, CH3 is not any kind of ion listed on table E or the periodic table, so therefore it can be concluded that there's only covalent because you don't have um, two ions. You only have one ion OH minus, but the other is just not an ion at all because it's not even listed. So this is just covalent because it has all nonmetals with no ions. Now let's talk in depth about multiple bonds. Multiple bonds exist in covalent bonds with each bond or line representing two, electron, two shared electrons or two dots. So the two types of multiple bonds are double and triple bonds. Double bonds uh, consist of two pairs of electrons or two lines. And in other words, they represent four shared electrons. Since you have two pairs, you have two times two or four electrons total that are shared. An example is O2 below, where each O has six valence electrons around it and two unpaired electrons each, all right? So two unpaired electrons on each O bond with the two unpaired electrons on the other atom, giving four paired electrons, or a double bond represented by the two dashes in between the O's down here. And triple bonds are six shared um, electrons represented by three pairs of electrons or three lines slash bonds. All right, an example is N2, where each N has five valence electrons um, or three unpaired electrons in each N, and they pair up with each other to get three bonds or lines between the two atoms, which are six paired electrons, all right? So you sh represent these three pairs or six, uh, on six shared electrons down here with these three lines. All right, so here we have a triple bond. Another example is HCN, which you can try on your own, but remember to pair the unpaired electrons. I just remember the special types of bonds are um, double and triple bonds in terms of multiple bonds. And remember that each bond or line represents two shared electrons. You can try the sample problem and this got a practice question on your own, but just keep in mind that um, one uh, line or bond represents two shared electrons, all right? So in this N2, we have three shared pairs of three lines. And since we have three shared pairs of three lines, we also have six shared electrons. Since each line represents two electrons each, three of these lines represent six uh, shared uh, electrons, all right? Here we have two shared pairs or two lines, so we have four shared electrons since we have two times two 
Each line represents two electrons, so we do two times two or four shared electrons total. All right, please complete these homework questions on your own for the next class. Thank you very much.